In this tutorial, we'll see a simple example illustrating the benefits of information hiding. Remember, the principle for information hiding is to, from the supplier side, we want to hide the secrets of implementation or design decisions that are subject to changes uh, in the future time. So once the uh, supplier publishes the interface of the class or their software, the clients will just rely on the interface. So you want to make sure everything that's actually specified in the interface should be stable. And everything that's not stable, which means if they are subject to change, they must be hidden from the clients. So the clients have no access to it. Let's say later on, if the, uh, if the supplier decides to make a change uh, on, uh, on the design, then the uh, clients will not be affected by the design changes. For example, let's say if the supplier is trying to implement a sorting routine uh, and how the uh, supplier actually, uh, how the supplier does the uh, uh, sorting, like uh, what kind of algorithm that the supplier is using, this will be hidden from the uh, supplier's interface. So in the supplier's interface, there will be only a feature called sort. In this case, in this case, the uh, clients will only just call the sort feature in the client's code. And later on, if the supplier decides to change, let's say from a bubble sort into a merge sort, which is will actually uh, have a, uh, improvements in the performance. But this, it, as far as the client's code is concerned, will not be affected. And that's really due to the principle of information hiding. There's something you really have to keep in mind. And in this tutorial, we're going to make a small example to illustrate what if you don't have information hiding and when the uh, supplier actually does some changes to a design decision and uh, how the clients will be affected. And then we're going to improve the design by introducing the practice of information hiding and see how the situation can be improved. Okay, so now let's go to uh, launch a terminal and let's go to the uh, workspace of uh, the 3311 Apple projects and let's create, let's launch the Apple Studio and for the current semester, summer 2015, the correct version for Apple Studio will be 1501. Let's launch that and wait for Apple Studio to be appearing and running the background. And in this tutorial, we'll also show you, uh, once you're done with your projects, how can you actually use the diagram generation tool in Eiffel Studio to automatically generate uh, the architectural diagram so that you can actually take it from there and try to redraw the diagram to make it look much more professional in, um, uh, in the Visio tool that you're required to use in the course, okay? So this book project is actually from the previous tutorial, so I'm going to remove that for now. Okay, just remove the link. So now we're going to create a new basic application, and then we'll say create. And here I would like to create, uh, this is actually the uh, uh, problem that you already have, the question sheet. So basically the requirement is, now we're considering a simplified version of an online store. And there are three kinds of entities that we want to implement in iPhone. So first is the order, second is the shopping cart, and the third one is a shop. And the order basically represents the order of a product, and this order is characterized by two attributes. So one is the name of the product, and the second is the quantity that's demanded. So, and the second one, and the second entity is the cart the shopping cart that a customer can actually gradually adding or deleting uh, orders into it. So cart contains a list of orders. Uh, a shop it actually allows a customer, first of all, to actually uh, add an item into the cart for a particular customer or to remove an item from the cart for the same customer. And also it allows a customer to actually check out uh, the cart in which case uh, the price, the total price from the orders that are actually in the cart should be able to be calculated, okay? So these are the three uh, basic 
uh, entities in our simplified version of the online store and the, some basic features that we are going to see. In this tutorial, I'm mainly going to uh, give you uh, to illustrate the idea of information hiding uh, just to the interface level. So for the implementation and detailed contracts, it will be your responsibility and your tasks to actually complete all, uh, both of them. So please make sure you complete the exercise uh, to get yourself familiar with also the programming parts of iPhone. Okay, so we're going to turn the above requirements into iPhone classes and features. Of course, you have to decide which features should be implemented as attributes, which means they're going to be implemented by storage, and which features should be implemented by commands or queries. And remember, the command query separation principle tells you that if a particular feature has no return type, then it will be treated as a command. In this case, uh, you are expected to implement some side effects, some effects on the system states. On the other hand, if a feature returns some value, then, then in this case, this feature is considered as a query about the system. And since you're only asking a question uh, about the current system state, so you should have no side effects. You should not change the system states in the, uh, um, in, the, uh, um, in the implementation body of the query. Okay, so this is a query, uh, command query separation principle, which is also important. Okay, so of course we need a contract to make sure your code is correct and you, you're responsible to make sure your contracts are correct. And we're going to show signatures of features and contracts and also we're going to write test cases. Right, uh, all of these should be done before we start coding how the implementation is going to uh, put the uh, updates or queries into effects. Okay, and also for the implementation here to actually implement the shopping cart. So we have at least two uh, implementation mechanisms. Either we have an array and we have linked list. So this is why I said in this case, because the design decision about how to implement or how to represent a card, a shopping card, is subject to change. Uh, is subject to change from the supplier side. So maybe when the uh, when the supplier first published their software, they are using an array implementation for the shopping cart, and the interface is already made available to the clients. But let's say later on, the supplier decides that for the linked list implementation might be more efficient and easier to maintain for some reason and that's really up to the uh, that's at the discretion of the supplier so supplier decides to change from array to linked list so the principle of information hiding is when the supplier first published the interface for these three classes and the supplier should already know such desi design decision about implementing implementing the shopping cart is subject to change. So they should have been hidden uh, from the client side so that if, for example, if the supplier changes from array into a linked list implementation, the client's code, which depends on the interface of these three classes, should not be affected. If they are affected, then that's not good because if every time a supplier make, uh, makes a change regarding this design decision, then the client's code will suddenly uh, not compile and have to make changes themselves. This is absolutely not acceptable. Okay, that's why information hiding principle is so important. You really have to make sure you understand the essence of information hiding. Okay, so we have to make sure we follow the test-driven developments, make sure all the test cases pass, and of course you have to keep writing test cases until you think you are confident that you have covered all the uh, possible cases for the inputs. Okay, and we have to use the debugger if you have the red bar, and even if you get green bar, you have to challenge yourself to see if you got enough test cases that test your software. And also a very important exercise for this, uh, for this uh, tutorial is, we're going to show you how to use the generation tool in Ivo Studio to generate an architectural diagram. The diagram looks a little bit like the bond notation, but without the contracts showing on the diagram. So, but this actually serves as a very good starting point for you to draw your fly notes bond diagram in Visio. Remember, in this 
uh, course, you are required to draw all your bond diagram in Visio for your submission. Okay. So, however, you may not be able to just draw right from the beginning in Visio for your bond diagram. So the iPhone Studio automatic generation tool will be very valuable just to get you some uh, idea to get started. So that's something I will show you briefly. But once we get the uh, diagram from iPhone Studio and maybe import it as a uh, image file, you can take it and then maybe print it out, put it uh, put it aside, and then to base on that to draw your uh, Visio diagram. Okay. Okay, the question for you at the end of the tutorial is how does how the information hiding principle actually helps the bad design and how? And okay, and once you actually have the information hiding principle, you should really con con contrast the architectures of the bad design and the good design to see how we actually reduce the coupling and reduce the coupling between classes. That's very so the coupling here which means the dependency between the classes. So this is something very important to notice. Okay, so let me just hide this uh, question sheet aside. We might refer to that later in the tutorial. So now let's uh, create our projects. So let's just call it shop. So let's call it a shop projects. Shop projects. And we want to make sure this is in our uh, 3311 Workspace, okay, that's in my home directory 3311 and then shop projects and then we'll say compile and as always we have to uh, first add the uh, testing library eSpec into the context and also to adjust the voice safety uh, setting to be complete. So if you go to targets and then go to voice safety here and then choose complete and then you go to syntax and choose the standard iPhone syntax and then now we will actually add the testing library okay library here will add let's say eSpec okay that was a typo there okay choose that and say okay okay so now, also, first of all, we're going to remove the uh, default symbolic link, meaning cluster for the current directory. And we're going to create uh, directories in our workspace. So shop projects here. So now we're going to have a root cluster. And we're going to drag and drop the application class into it. And then we're going to have the uh, tests and we're going to have the business logic in this case let's just call it shop okay so now let's uh, go back and create those clusters or symbolic names in our iPhone studio we can add a cluster here so you can uh, first root put it in the root and we also have the uh, business logic so it will be shop and put it under current directory slash shop and then we also have tests okay it will be stored in the tests directory that we just created and now let's compile okay everything compiled you can see now we have three clusters here and under the root cluster we have the application class okay so now let's go directly to how we can first do a bad design without the information hiding and see from the client's point of view how the bad design can make any changes on the design decision affect the client's code okay that's the point of illustration and see how we can adapt the bad design into a good design so let's first go to shop cluster right click uh, add a new class so first of all let's create an order class okay the order essentially encapsulates the uh, uh, a an order that you actually add to the shopping cart and here let's say first of all we declare that for the order we have a constructor called make and now we define that make feature here and of course you have to give myself credits and then and order 
clause encapsulates the products and of an order. Okay. And now we're going to define the make feature. Before we do that, we, maybe we can think about what uh, attributes we want to have for the order. Okay, so here attributes. So of course we have the uh, uh, so we have products. So let's just make it easy, just uh, like a string. For example, it can be uh, a pencil or a pencil box, or it can be a book, or it can be anything. Okay, just any products. Just make it easy for this for the purpose of the uh, tutorial. The products, and also we have quantity. In which case, we'll just uh, have integer. Okay, and of course we can have we should have an invariant saying, of course, first of all, product name non empty right so because it's a string so we can check to see you should know this feature by now so let me just first compile of course it's going to say that and, and we're going to okay so to actually initialize a, an order so we should pass the new products to initialize the products right so we can say p of type string and we can say quantity of type integer and here, in short, we can say products uh, set. So we can say products is equal to p, and also quantity set. And here we can say uh, quantity is equal to q. Okay. Let me just comment this out for now, and then to see if it compiles. Okay. So okay, so we have to set it okay because of voice safety. So we have to explicitly initialize them. So let's do that. So now, so here this will be as easy as some simple assignment. It's assigned to be p and quantity. We have to also explicitly assign that. Otherwise, the default value for integer would be zero. Okay, and here we have to say q. Okay, so now. Uh, unknown identifier of products. Maybe it was a typo there. Okay, it compiles. Okay, so now as for the invariants, we can make it as easy as okay, product the name of the products because product is actually a string. So if we try to code completion, you should know this feature by now. You can check to see if a particular string is empty or not. Okay. So, and also we can say product quantity positive. So we would not allow an order of some products of minus one quantity or of zero quantity, right? So we can say quantity should be greater than zero. Okay, so the initializer, the constructor is going to make sure not only that it initializes the products and quantity into p and q respectively, but also the invariants that the product name is not empty, and also it should be a negation here, of course, and also the quantity must be larger than zero. Okay, so these are the four conditions that will be checked uh, at the end of the uh, execution of the constructor. You also should have known this by now. Okay, it's very important to know what's the meaning of the post condition and the invariants and how they are monitored at the runtime. Okay, that's for order. So now we can do another class. And that's it. so you can see now in the shop we have an order class. So let's do a new class called cart. Okay, it's going to be for shopping cart. Okay, always do documentation. And we can say a shopping cart of orders okay so now for the cart uh, certainly we can say what we can say is so again so we can uh, we can declare the constructor later let's think about what attributes we should have so let's say the cart simply have an attributes so we're going to try to array 
representation of the shopping cart for, for now. And then we'll see if we change our design decision, how it is going to affect the, uh, uh, the uh, client's code because there's no information hiding uh, imposed in this first version, okay? So now, what about uh, car simply have some orders? Okay, you can see the uh, S for the uh, non-singular form, plur uh, plural form. So orders will be an array of order, right? So now, well, so if I simply try to, okay, so here I would say create, make, so now, so create make again, you have to say that otherwise you cannot use the make feature to initialize the cart. Okay, that's a very important uh, programming mechanism to know for iPhone. So here we have constructor and here we have make. And let's say we simply expect to initialize an empty cart. The bottom line is we don't want any void cart and that would be forbidden by the void safety, okay? So now we want to ensure, let's say initially it's empty, so we can say orders, uh, we can say cart empty, right? So we can say orders dot, let me just compile first. Of course, would you think the current code for cart will actually compile? You are supposed to know whether it will compile or not. Okay, think about your answer and yes, why? No, why not? Okay, before I hit the uh, compile button, so you gotta think about the answer yourself before I com uh, compile. Okay, the answer is it wouldn't because here we have an orders attributes of type array. So by default, if it does not get initialized explicitly, its value is going to be void. So that's why in the constructor, we have to explicitly initialize that. That's why whenever you see this error here, variable is not properly set. You have to ensure the variable is properly set by the corresponding setter instruction. So here the setter instruction can refer to either the constructor, which is the case here, or it can refer to any commands, which means they have no return value and they are expected to change the system states. Okay, so here we can say create, okay, orders dot make empty. That's what we can do, okay. This essentially creates an empty card from the make. Okay, so let's write a contract for that. So we'll say orders dot, for example, dot count is equal to zero. And this is actually basically the same as if you say card uh, uh, size zero, it will be the same, but I'm just showing you different ways of writing things. Uh, actually, what I meant to do is this will here because the size is zero, the count will be the size. And now, because orders is actually the array class, it also has the uh, feature here. It is not empty. Okay. So now, what you gotta think about is: should we have any variants, things like like a cart not empty, and then if I put orders dot is empty. Is this invariant right or wrong? Okay, think about your answer now. Again, if yes, why? If not, why not? Okay, in this case, it would not be right to have this order that is empty invariant because if you say order orders that is empty, okay, if you say that, that means throughout the lifetime of any shopping cart, it's they, uh, they always have no orders in the cart. Apparently that doesn't make any sense, right? And although this invariance will be satisfied by the make feature as the initializer, but later on, let's say if you're trying to add an order into the cart, that will certainly violate this invariance. So this invariance is not appropriate. Would it be appropriate to say, it is always the case that the orders is not empty? Okay, this is the negation of the previous uh, invariance, and you should know that, okay? It's a very simple logic. Okay, so now, uh, if we say it is always the case that the orders, uh, the, uh, the shopping cart is no always non-empty. In this case, of course, it is not appropriate either, because after the initializer is executed, 
then this invariance will be violated immediately. And we know that we do want to initialize just an empty card because if we didn't uh, if we didn't take any arguments for the constructor, we would not know uh, what to be put in the shopping cart initially. And that's usually the case, right? If you go to Amazon, of course you start with an empty shopping cart rather than some uh, rather than a, a non-empty shopping cart with some default items, right? So either you put orders is that is empty, it is not appropriate, or if you put not order that is empty is not appropriate either. You should know the reason for both. Okay, so you, should, so you should always challenge yourself when you are putting some invariants or you did not put some invariants. Is it really appropriate? Okay, that's really the essence of the cyber contracts. When you're when you're really thinking about whether some certain contracts are appropriate or not, you're really thinking deep into your design, uh, your design, the appropriateness of your design, which is very a very valuable exercise when you're developing a software. Okay, okay. So now we have the order class and we have the cart class. Okay. And the card class is simply a uh, is simply a um, uh, an array of orders. Okay, so up to now we can already generate a bound diagram. Okay, so I'm um, uh, a bound diagram in Eiffel Studio, of course. Let me show you how you can do that. So here you can see that we usually we only look at the output panel here, and you have several tags here. You can see that, right? I sh so output usually just shows you the compilation status for to show you the uh, Errors of uh of the compile time, if any, and I show you in the previous tutorial that if you simply just drag and drop, the way to do drag and drop in IFO is to right click in the class and right click to say pick the class, and you will see the blue uh, oval here, and then to right click on this empty panel here, and then it will actually show you, for example, currently, so this uh. Uh, button here is actually saying ancestors. It's showing you all the ancestors or the parent classes of the uh, card class, the one we just pick and drop. In this case, there's only the any class that's the uh, parent class of card. Okay, and if we go to descendants, in this case, there's no uh, descendant classes of uh, the card class. Also, you can see the uh, clients and supplier. Okay, for example, if you look at the clients, clients is like is there any is there any uh class that uses the surface of the cart? So far, no. But later on, once we create a shop class, we'll see that the shop will actually point to the cart class. But now, do we have any supplier for the cart uh for the cart class? I think we do because the cart is actually using the surfaces of both the array and the order. Whenever you declare some attributes or feature uh with the type. And that particular type would be the supplier of that class, right? So if you look at the uh, suppliers, if you look at that, you can see that's array of G. So that means you are really using the array class, okay? So now let's uh, try another functionality. So you're supposed to play with this and see uh, what you can do with them and then try with other things, okay? You can see attributes, you can see routines, etc. Okay, now let's click on so we have seen the outputs and we have seen the class. Now we're going to see the diagram here. And what we want to do is to somehow, you can see different button here. And if you click on, let me see, targets to cluster or class, okay? If you click on this, click on this, okay? And then I want to show maybe just the business logic. If I right click on this, so it's always the one you want to pick and drop, okay? pick. So, okay, first of all, right click on the shop cluster, right click on the pick, remember always right click, right click on the pick cluster shop, and then here you have some cluster symbol there, and then right click again on the, uh, on the panel here. So now what you have is actually the diagram for your uh, sh uh, shop uh, cluster. And for the root cluster, for example, if we don't want it, let me see, we might be able to just remove that. However, you gotta be very careful. When you say remove, you gotta say remove from the diagram panel only. You cannot say delete. If you say delete, it's going to delete it from your file system, which is not what you want. So remove that from the diagram. Okay. And okay, 
got to make sure everything compiles. Okay, let me do it again for you. Right click on the cluster, chop, right click again to say pick, and now right click into the diagram panel, right? Uh, the diagram tag here, and now you see we have a bound diagram already. So you should really try, it's a very simple step. Okay, so now you can have, you can make it, you can actually just uh, play with that and make it maybe larger, uh, etc. You can see that now we have a client supplier relationship now. You can see here, let me try to explain the notation to you. So now because in the cart class uh, here, we actually declare an attributes orders of type array. So you can see in the cart class, we actually declare an attributes of type or, uh, of uh, of name orders, and it is of type array of order. You can see over over here inside the square brackets we have dot dot dot. Oh, uh, you sh uh, this is the notation that refers to the class that the arrow is pointing to. So that means we are declaring orders of type array of order, and this is exactly what you have to convert into the Visio uh, tool. Okay. We're going to get the. Uh, we're going to make the uh, architecture a little bit more sophisticated once we introduce the uh, uh, shop class. So, but now this is the easiest one you can draw. Okay, so please make sure you try to reproduce the diagram in uh, Eiffel Studio yourself. It's very important, especially when you're doing your assignments or projects. When you have a more sophisticated uh, architecture for your software, you really want to use the Eiffel Studio generation tool for the diagram to get you, to give you some idea uh, as a uh, uh, as the beginning and then from there you can actually uh, convert that into Visio okay that will be the recommended workflow for you and now let's say you I'm happy with this and then I can say go go to here and they say export the uh, diagram into PNG and if I say for example go to desktop and then say okay and let me say if I go to desktop, I can already see shop.png and that's the diagram. However, again, it would not be acceptable for you to submit your work by using just giving me this diagram. You're supposed to use the uh, the bond diagram using the Visio tool because in the Visio, you will be the, well, the uh, you will be able to expand the view of the classes on the both sides and then you can attach features and contracts into the diagram itself. But you cannot do that in the Eiffel generation tool, so it would not be acceptable if you try to submit this for your work. Okay, I cannot emphasize this more. Okay, so now we are done with our first diagram, and you can just uh, go back, uh, switch back to the output panel, and then make sure everything still compiles. And now let's go to shop cluster, and then right click, and now let's go to the new class. Okay, and now we want to create a class called shop. Okay, and let's say creates. Okay, okay, a shop for maintaining a cart of orders, which means we are we can actually um, initialize an empty cart. We can add items and delete items uh, into the cart or from the cart. Remember the uh, problem description here. We actually said. Here in your uh, in the shop class, it supports the uh, addition and removal of items. Okay. Okay. So now let's do the shop. Okay. So now somehow, so you can see now shop certainly should use the servers from the cart, right? So now that that's why we say shop would be a client of the order, which means we're going to see an arrow from shop class to the uh, cart class, just like the cart class has an arrow to the order class, okay? It's a very simple idea to understand. Okay, so now let's think about what features we want to have. Okay, let's say feature, again, we have attributes. Okay, we can say we have a cart, right? And that will be of type cart, okay? So now we're going to say, uh, we're going to have a uh, create, make, and make uh, some features. It's always good to bookmark your feature section here. So constructor and then make. Okay, we can say 
initialize an empty card for the shop. Okay, so now we can say create card dot make. Okay, if I try that, it compiles good. And now what I can do is I can say ensure card dot orders, which is an array dot is empty. So I can say now I can say is a card. Uh, I can say empty card maybe. And apparently I have some typo here for the ensure. Let me retype it. Okay. And now I'm going to compile and compiles. Okay. So now we're going to support commands and queries, right? We're going to have two commands. Okay. We're going to add order into the cart. In which case we're going to add some order O into order. Okay. So which has no return type. Actually, it would be better if I do the following. We can we can actually say which products we actually want to add, and so products and also quantity. That's what we can do. And then in this case, we actually add it into the uh, cart. Okay, I'll do the implementation later for you to actually illustrate the force feature in uh, iPhone array. So also uh, remove order the string, okay, for a particular product, let's say, okay. This may not be so realistic, but you can actually get, uh, you actually get an idea. So let's say we want to remove the order. So we want to say we want to remove quantity something. Let's say we want to remove 10 pencil boxes from the shopping cart. Of course, if currently the shopping cart has does not have enough, uh, does not have uh, 10, let's say it only has five pencil cases in, in the cart, of course you cannot remove 10. In this case, you would know there's some precondition you have to write for the remove order, right? Okay, so now let's see. See, so when you add your order, it would be okay if the P, the product name, is already in the cart. Let's say we already have five pencil boxes in the cart then it would be okay to add another five pencil boxes into the card. So if P is repeating, that's okay, or Q is repeating, that's also okay. However, for the remove order, so we would say require that the, uh, uh, somehow you want to, say, oh, write it for you, and however you have to uh, do this yourself. You want to say uh, total Quantities for uh, for p uh, okay greater than uh, what about I say more than q okay what I'm saying is in the existing card the number of uh, the total quantity for p must be greater than or the q otherwise you cannot remove q from that quantity right so. This may not be so easy to actually just do a simple uh, practical expression here. What I would suggest is this might be something new to you, but you're supposed to know. What I can do is I can have an auxiliary feature in this class for me to use for the contract. So I can say total quantity quantities of, in this case, I will do P. So that means you need to have a queries here and Okay, I can actually make it auxiliary queries. Okay, and this is only, okay, this is, okay, and we're going to say, copy this, okay? Of course, we're gonna have also queries for the classes. Okay, it's different types, types of query. Okay, so now auxiliary queries, okay, let's say for contracts. Okay, here we can say total quantities of so P is of some, um, okay, I'm going to return integer. So return the total quantities of P in cart, okay? Which means you are going to iterate through the cart 
and see uh, what total quantity you have. Okay, I'm going to leave this to you as an exercise. Okay, and what should be the precondition for that? And you should be able to know, of course, uh, in this case, although you can actually say that a precondition should be that the P must be already in the card. That's okay, but since we're actually going to return the total quantities, you can make it make this routine more general, more tolerant, in the sense that if the P actually does not exist in your card, then the return total quantities will be just zero, right? So it's actually just a matter of uh, like a, what would be convenient for you to use, okay? I would suggest that, I'll put a comment here, if P does not exist in card, the return value is zero, okay? Now, that means you don't need a precondition for that. Okay, actually, sorry, this should be, uh, so because that is going to return the integer larger than or equal to Q, okay? That's what I meant to say. Okay, and we're saying the total quantities of the products P that you're trying to remove should be uh, greater than or equal to the uh, quantity you want to remove, okay? And because it will not be so easy to write a one line expression, it might be possible, but it will be too complicated to read. So that's why I'm defining an auxiliary query here that returns an integer, right? And that's larger than with the cube. Okay, this is a very common thing to do for writing good contracts. So you are really supposed to learn this and do that in practice in, uh, for yourself. Okay, remove order here, add order. And here also we have the uh, precondition and postcondition. I'll leave them to you. Okay, you're supposed to write the contracts for yourself. Okay, and now for the add order, okay, since we're using an array, I'm going to show you how you can add the order, okay, add the array, okay. Remember in the uh, constructor here, we actually, in the constructor here, we actually uh, call the uh, constructor of the make, uh, the, the make constructor from the uh, card class, in which case, if you go to card, you can see that over there, we actually call the make empty feature from the array class, okay? So now, if you go to the array class, we actually mentioned this already in the previous tutorial series when we talk about the uh, bank account example. So we talk about the force feature, okay? So here, force, okay, you have to dis be able to distinguish between uh, the put feature, which puts some item at index i. So you can see that if you try to put the index put something into index i, you have to make sure that the i, the, the position you're trying to uh, propose to put, must be valid, okay? And, and for the force, in this case, it, it is possible to use the force to actually expand your array capacity, okay? Let me do some illustration for you, okay? So now, let me just open a new file for you. Okay, so now it's force and put, right? Let me do force first because that's actually what I'm going to uh, illustrate in this tutorial. Okay, for the force feature, so now, remember we say in the array class, we actually have the lower feature and the upper feature. So the lower, so that means, uh, let me uh, just assuming that, uh, also we have the force, okay? Remember, uh, just assuming that we have some array of, uh, let's say, string, for example, okay? So I'm going to use that to illustrate. So we can say a.lower, a.upper, and a.force. And then you pass two arguments. I'll show you how to use force in a moment. Okay, that's how, how you do it. So now, the a.lower refers to the lower index of the array a. Upper uh, refers to the uh, upper index for the array A. For example, you might have an array that looks like maybe it starts from index 1, so you have uh, basically 1, 2, 3, let's say we have size 4, right? It may not be so easy to draw here, but I'm actually going to do my best. So now, basically, it might be easier if I just do this, okay? May not be so pretty for the array, but you get the idea. 
Okay, so basically you can see that. So basically we have one, two, three, four. So four spots in the array, right? Four spots in the array. So we have position one, position two, position three, position four. In this case, a dot lower would be equal to one. A dot upper would be equal to four, right? And what would be a dot count? Okay, is equal to what? Okay, so now in general, uh, well by default, the lower for uh, the lower index for an array in Eiffel would be one. However, Eiffel does give you the uh, flexibility to create an array of any arbitrary lower and upper okay so for example if you go to there and you can see that if you now in the array class you can see for the make uh, feature so you can say go to make here you can say minimum index and maximum index in this case for example by default the minimum index would be just one okay but you can choose that to be zero which is more like a C or Java array we can make a minimum index to be three or four or five, whatever in indices that make sense to you in your application. So in IFO, the lower index is not necessarily one always. So that's why I said before, when you run a loop to iterate through an array, it is the best to, to refer to the lower and upper rather than some magic number like a one or four, okay? So now, what would be the count? How would you define the count, like a size of the array in terms of the lower and upper? Okay, I'm going to give you this formula here and you should be able to figure out why it is the case. So it would be a dot upper minus a dot lower plus one. So let's see if that's the case for this array here. So in this case, so we have upper being four, lower being one, and plus one. So this will be equal to 4 minus 1, 3 plus 1, and then it will be 4. So that's the size. Okay, so now what should be the ADA count for an empty array? Okay, so first of all, we know that it should be 0, right? Okay, so now, so that means we want to make this equation here ADA upper minus ADA lower plus 1 equals 0. That's for the empty array. So we want to say a dot upper minus a dot lower plus one is equal to zero. This is an equation that should satisfy for the empty array. So that means a dot upper minus a dot lower uh, equals minus one. In this case, you can see that means a dot upper is actually one strictly low, uh, smaller than a dot lower. So that means if you have a dot lower, okay, so for empty arrays, if you have a dot lower equals one, okay, that means the a dot upper would be equal to zero. You can see this is the only special case for the array where the upper is one greater than the lower. It is because we always want to satisfy this formula here for the size of the array. In the case of the empty array, this equation here should evaluate to uh, zero. So that's why when you see lower and upper here, so now you have zero minus one plus one, you will be zero, right? Let me give you one another example. Let's say a dot lower is equal to two, for example. Okay, and let's see what about the uh, C array or Java array. In this case, a dot upper will be one smaller than that. That'll be minus one. Okay, now the question would be, this would be the initial configuration for your array. So how do you actually put the very first item into your array? So you can see that the lower, that means the index starts from one. So that means for the empty array, if you want to, if you want to say a one, in this case, this will be invalid because it is empty, so the uh, index one does not just exist yet. So here, if you say a zero, that will also be invalid, okay? So now, here comes the usefulness for the force feature for the array. So the force feature will take two arguments. You will take the value v you want to force into the array, and also some index you want to uh, put. 
Okay, so now for the force, that means you're forcing some new elements into some new position. In this case, for example, that's for the empty array. Okay, in this case, because the upper now is actually zero, okay, so basically we want to make after the force of the for, uh, first item into the array is completed, we want to make sure the lower is one and upper is one. That will actually make the size of the array one. Okay, it's a very simple math, so don't get too confused. So now, what we want to say is, in this case, we can say a dot force. Okay, so let's say we want to add Jim into the array because the array of string. So now we can say a dot upper plus one. So a dot upper plus one is always the. It's basically always the case you want to write for the force feature. I'm now just trying to explain to you why a dot upper plus one because. Initially, if the array is empty, then the a dot upper is one strictly smaller than the lower. So that's why if you simply say upper, that means you're trying to add into the position zero, which doesn't exist. So you cannot. That's not what you want actually. So what you want to do is to say a dot upper plus one. So initially, it for the very first item you're going to force into this position here. So from zero to one, and then in the uh, the next one. Because after this one here, a dot lower remains to be one, but now a dot upper is equal to one, right? After this force uh, statement here. So now, if you say again, a dot force, let's say Jeremy, and then a uh, always stay the same, a dot plus a dot upper plus one. So now you're going to force into position two because a dot upper is actually one. So you're going to force into position two. That means you put Jim here and Jeremy here. That's actually how you do the uh, expansion of the array. Okay, I hope that's clear. That's a very, very important feature of Eiffel array that you have to know the difference between force and put. On the other hand, so if you try to say a dot put, okay, and you try to say some, let's say Jackie, let's put Jackie into a dot upper plus one, this will be invalid because the index you put into uh, what you want to put into the array must be valid. But here, for the force feature, the index you try to put into the array can be one greater than the current upper. That's the crucial difference between put and force. Again, the index you pass here for the put must be valid, which means it must be be it must be in between uh, upper uh, lower and upper. But here, for the force feature. It's one of its purposes is to make sure you can expand the array gradually. So that's why the index you put here for the force can be one greater than the current upper. That's actually how you gradually expand the array. Okay. So please review this uh, explanation about the uh, how to use the Eiffel array, especially how to use the uh, lower, upper, and also force and also put. So the signature for put and force will be the same. It's really about how valid I how the validity of i is defined, okay? So here the i can go only only from lower to upper, but here the i can be from lower to upper plus one for the expansion, okay? I hope that's clear. Let me minimize that, close that, okay? So now if we go to shop, and now for the add order, we're going to expand the array. So that's why, first of all, we're going to create a new order, right? So local variable order, Okay, we're going to say order. So we're going to create order dot make. So P and Q. Okay, that should be very straightforward here. And now we're going to say cart, which is a cart. Okay, cart dot orders, which is in the array dot force. Okay, so now we're going to put a new order into it. I remember what I said. So here you should say cart dot orders dot upper and plus one, right? And let me try to compile. Okay, it compiles. Okay, so now we have add order, and I'll leave the remove order to you as an exercise. So you should really look at the uh, interface where you can look at what features are actually available for the array class and do the uh, uh, and do the implementation yourself and also the contracts, okay? I'm going to leave that for you to use an exercise, 
Okay, so these are the two commands for the uh, order class uh, for the shop class, and now we're going to have a single query here. Um, so maybe we should put the queries before the auxiliary queries because they're more important than them. Okay, so now we're going to say let's say we have a checkout. Okay, the checkout basically is going to return the the price due for the current cart. Okay, so depending on uh, depending on of course the quantity and the orders in the current cart, we're going to calculate the corresponding price. Okay, so now for the checkout, so we're going to see. So now. There should be no precondition because right from the beginning of your shop, you can already calculate. It's just that in, in initially, uh, so that's why. So here we can say integer, right? Let's make sure it compiles. Okay. So now we can say initially. So this is one of the post condition you can put for the uh, for the make feature here. So now you can say uh, you can say checkout zero. Which means initially, because a cart is actually empty, so the uh, uh, checkout should be equal to zero, right? That's for the constructor. So this is actually I'm showing you a common practice. So all the public queries may be used as pre or post conditions for your contract in the feature in the same class. Okay, that's a very important thing to know. Okay. So now for checkout, how, how are we supposed to do that? It will be very simple, actually. Let me demonstrate it to you. So basically, we need a loop to actually iterate through the array of orders in the cart. OK, so we're going to write a loop. Basically, uh, type from, enter. This gives you the skeleton of that. So basically, we need a loop counter here, local variable i of type integer. So here we'd say from, so this is to initialize to do initialization uh, of your loop counter or other variables to be used in the iteration. This will be the exit condition, which means which means if the condition specified under until is satisfied, then we should stop uh, the next iteration. And this is a loop body, of course. So always, once we define a loop counter, first just write out how the loop counter is supposed to be uh, updated and examined. So initial, so that should be assigned to rather than saying one. Although I said the default value for the lower for array is one, okay. But you, there's no guarantee. So you better say card dot orders dot lower, okay. That's uh, much more recommended. So now it doesn't matter what the lower is. It would just be uh, it would just be checked accordingly, okay. Now until i is greater than card the orders dot upper okay when this is greater than that means we have just checked the equal case in the previous iteration that means we have walked through all the elements so that means it is it is about time to actually skip the next iteration i is equal to i plus one okay that's just like a pattern you have to follow every time so every time when you're writing a loop just write this part first and then now you can now starting to uh, do the updates. So because this is a query, so the result, uh, the result is actually of type integer. Although it's not so necessary, but it's up to you. You can say explicitly that should be assigned to be zero. Although that's the default behavior. So now we can say we try to accumulate the result, right? To so now card dot orders and index into i. Then this will be of type order right if you go back to your card it's an array of order so if you try to index into any one of them you will be an order okay and now we can say um, quantity oh actually there's one in, in, important information we forgot to include okay in the uh, because we need to calculate the price so what about the unit price that's something we missed but that's okay you know we're trying we're still trying to uh, figure out how the uh, classes are going to interact with each other. So let's go to the uh, order here. Okay, so now what we can do is to actually say unit price. Okay, how about that? 
So what this is going to do is to actually say, now we have a product of unit price of integer with quantity. For example, let's say each pencil box, we have a pencil box, each one of them cost $2, and now we're going to order 10 of them. So the total price for this particular order will be 2 times 10, okay? So we might actually want to uh, switch the order a little bit. So you can see we are still figuring out what should be the final version for the interface. So it is okay, but we have to uh, fix several places, which is okay. You should know how to do this by yourself. Products, and also this will be price for the argument. So unit price is equal to price. Okay, so here we can say unit price set and we say unit price is equal to price and we should also get the invariance that product unit price positive you wouldn't expect the uh, pencil box to be of either zero dollars or minus dollars right so we would say uh, unit price larger than zero okay because we have some interface incompatibility, so we're going to fix them. Okay, so here order would be, so we are trying to add an order, so now we have to have the unit uh, price, right? Okay, so now we're going to have price integer. Okay, that's good, okay. So what we have done so far, what we just, we, what we have just done, was to add a new attribute to the uh, order class, which is the unit price for the products. Okay, so now back to the shop, and now in the uh, total uh, in the uh, checkout feature here. So we are actually going to somehow I don't know why I missed the uh, the code for the checkout. Maybe because I didn't save before I compile, but that's okay. So let me just. It would, wouldn't take long to rewrite it, okay? So let me say, so here we have to, okay? So maybe always save before you try to compile or before you switch to other tab. So I integer from, okay, enter here. So result is equal to zero. I is equal to uh, cart.orders dot lower until I greater than card.orders dot upper okay and now I is equal to I plus one okay now we're gonna say result is accumulated each time by the uh, current order that we are looking at and that should be indexed by the current value of the loop counter and this expression here is of type order remember and save it and card here is orders of array of order right so now we're going to say dot unit price times if you like we can actually uh, create a local variable here so we can say the current order that we're looking at okay so what we can say is order here would be equal to this expression so the later expression can be simplified greatly so we can say order uh, unit price times order dot uh, quantity, right? That would be, uh, okay? So this would be how we do the uh, checkout, okay? So now, so far, you can see that we have three classes. We have car, we have order, we have shop. And now we have the, uh, for the uh, shop class, we have initializer, constructor. We have two commands to add the order or to remove an order. And also we have the checkout feature. And we also have an auxiliary query for writing better contracts, okay? Ah, oh, I see. I was actually doing the total quantities off. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. So now, okay, since I am have I've done that already, so you can see that's a very similar loop, okay? I'm actually going to do that for you since I'm doing that anyway. So now the difference between total quantities off and the checkout is, what's the difference really? This total quantities of is specific to a particular products, right? But here, this is not specific to any products. Basically, all the products in the cards will be calculated. So in this case, we're going to say 
if so we're going to do order because it's before so now I can say this order here is equal to card dot orders I okay uh, yep that would be the order okay now we can say if order dot products okay so here I want to say if the products matches the P that we are trying to look at right Okay, I'm going to use object equality. You should know why, because we want to compare just the contents of the string, but not their references. Then, in this case, we can actually calculate the price. You can see we filter out all the uh, prices for other products that's irrelevant to P. Okay, so we can actually calculate the total prices just for this particular product's P. Result is equal to, okay. Okay, uh, so here we'll say, the expression here will be just the same as before. Let me just calculate. Uh, let me just copy that. You should know why that we actually have uh, this if conditional here. Okay, that's the implementation for the total quantities of, and this feature here is actually used in the remove order for the contracts. Okay, you're really supposed to know how to do this yourself in the project or in the uh, in our test later or exam. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now this is basically give you some idea about the uh, bad design. Okay, why it is bad? Before we criticize about the design, let's have a look at the bond diagram. Okay, the architecture diagram. And let me show you again how to do that. We have done that before, even before shop was created. So go to diagram here. Okay, so now I think, uh, let me try to see, you may have to remove this diagram first by right click and say remove from diagram, you may have to say that, but let me just try to see. If I first go to, so now we're in the diagram panel here, make sure you click on diagram here, and then go to click on uh, target to cluster or classes. Okay, click on that. Okay, so now if you right click on the shop cluster, right click again to say pick cluster shop, and now you have the cluster symbol here, and now right click again on the diagram panel. If you do that, okay, so now you do have this. So now we have the shop, and we have this, this is not really shown properly, so I would suggest right click and say remove from diagram, okay, and then we'll compile first. Okay, so now let me just do it again. So now, Okay, diagram, right click on the shop cluster, right click to pick, and now right click to drop. Okay, so now you have to organize that a little bit. Okay, this is better. This is exactly what I expected to see. So I would suggest later on, whenever you try to regenerate the diagram, just remove the previous one from this diagram, but make sure if you click on the one to remove, you say remove from diagram rather than delete. If you delete, it's going to delete all your files for the source code. So be very careful with that, okay? So now, as we know before, uh, so we have a shop. Uh, let me just put uh, maybe in this order, okay? I should prefer doing that myself, but you may have different order that you prefer, which is okay. So now let's see. So we have a, okay? So basically, this is the bad design, but I will show you why. Okay, although, but this diagram also shows you that, okay, let me see if I can make this diagram better. There might be some other text I can play with. So how about this? Client supplier. Okay, you have to play with diagram a little bit, actually. It seems like this diagram is not showing all the information here. So the information I do want to show you is, uh, let me see, client supplier, client supplier. We don't want to show inheritance, it's not important for this exercise here. Okay, so what I want to show you is, the reason that you see we have a shop and we have a cart, and the shop declares, oh, okay, let me just go to class to convince you that's really the case. So let's first go to shop. So if you go to shop class here, and you will see that in the shop class, 
we actually have declare an attribute of type cart, right? That's why we have an arrow here from shop to cart, and that's the name of the attributes. And now, also as before, we have declare an attribute called orders, that's of type an array of order. That's why we have an arrow here from cart to order, and here the dot 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 refers to the class being pointed to. Okay, so the one arrow that's missing here, but that's very important thing to know. Okay, what's the class? That we are also using the servers from for the shop class it is not really shown in this diagram that's why if you really just give me this diagram it's incomplete so that's why it is not acceptable you're supposed to actually know this uh, dependency here and then redraw that in your bond diagram in the vco tool but this is give gives you some uh, very good starting point okay so now let's uh, have a look at so you can see that it's specifically in the uh, because here we are declaring the cart, right? So that means we can actually access the orders attributes of the cart in this shop class. And the, uh, the orders attributes is of type uh, array. So if you look at the, uh, for example, let's say if you look at the checkout feature here, you can see the code in the supplier, well, actually I should say, you can think of this shop here is the client of uh, the the shop here is the client is the clients of the class uh, cart right and this uh, okay let me uh, just write it down for you so checkout is the is a clients of okay so we can say cart and also the array why because you can see that here in this loop here we are accessing the orders uh, attributes of the cart that means we are really depending on the fact that the orders is actually an array right so you can see that from the clients point of view so here don't get confused you uh, from the previous tutorial we are mainly focusing on the case where the test case are the clients of your business logic but clients, remember I said in the lecture, you are clients whenever you're using a surface from some other class, right? So in this case, the checkout feature is using the surface of the arrays. In this case, it's a card that orders, it's actually an array. So you can see that, right? Because card is actually a, a supplier of the shop class and the card, yeah. So the card class is actually a supplier of the shop and the shop is a client of the card. Okay, make sure you understand that client supplier relationship. Okay, so now, okay, and and check out depends on the fact that cart the orders is an array. Okay, so this is actually a coupling. So this is a, a tight coupling between the two classes, which means now whether this checkout will work depends on. Uh, depends on the fact that orders is actually an array okay so now this is actually a bad thing okay uh, and also you can see you can uh, imagine that we actually have similar implementation for all the other features like commands or for example here you can see that oh, also here you can see the add order here this add order here is also a client of the card class and array class because you can see that we are also trying to access the card and also its orders attributes which is an array and we also depending on the fact that the orders is actually represented as an array that's why we are calling this force feature specifically okay we are, so here this is another command that depends on the uh, the design decision of the card class using an array to represent the orders and remove order will be similar okay it will be exactly similar so and the checkout would be uh, would, would be just what we said and also total quantities of again so here we also depending on the fact that card orders is actually an array somehow it is not hidden from us shop class as a client okay so so far I've demonstrated that so somehow the de design decision okay let me go to cart okay so here the orders is somehow not hidden from the uh, clients okay the fact that 
order is actually represented by an array is not hidden from any potential clients. For example, the shop is actually a client because we actually make this orders available because here feature it did not restrict that to be uh, none. It didn't do that. So that's why this is actually this orders is available. This array is available to any other clients. So the shop clients here is actually using this fact that the uh, card the uh, orders is actually in the array. So that's why all the features actually using the array features. Okay. So now let's say what can what what can be so bad about a design? As and also you can see that in the bound diagram that's generated from the Eiffel Studio, it should have shown. Uh, some uh, maybe somehow it's only showing your user-defined classes. It doesn't show the basic classes. Let me have a look very quickly. It should be a way for you to show also the uh, basic classes. But you can also try to see that. Uh, try to uh, okay. So maybe uh, you can play with that later. Okay. So okay, I'm not going to spend time in this, but the point is you should not use just a diagram that's generated from Eiffel Studio. They're only giving you giving you some reference, okay? So now, in this diagram, there should be another, uh, imagine there should be a ray class as another OVO here, and then the shop should have another, uh, should have another uh, actually arrow to there, which means shop is also depending on the array class, okay? So now, what, What's so bad about this design? So that means this array is actually one of the design decisions of the card class being a supplier. But now let's say if we changed this design decision from array into linked list. Remember I mentioned in the problem sheet that try either an array or a linked list implementation. Okay, so that's would be that should be the secret of the design decision of the supplier. Okay, if you do that, now, if you actually have followed the information hiding principle, since we are changing the secrets, so this should have no effects, should not affect the uh, client, which, which is the shop class. But would it affect in the current design? Think about that for a few seconds, and then I'll, I'll show you by clicking on the compile button. Okay, the answer is it would, because if we change that, you can see now, all the compile time errors actually come from the shop class, right? So you can see that now if you change the uh, from low, uh, so now if you change from array into, okay, let me show you again. If you change that back to array, everything would compile. However, if you change that to linked list, which means this change represents some design decision changes of the supplier, the, car, uh, the card class, which should be hidden from the clients of shop, uh, from the clients, which is the shop class. However, if you change that to be linked list, and then you recompile, all the, so these are all the errors that actually occurred uh, in the client side, which means the client somehow, they did not do anything wrong, but just because the card supplier actually changes their design decision, which should be kept as a secret, and now the client is affected severely. So you can see that now, all the features that's specific to the fact that the orders was represented by an array class now would not work anymore because now card.orders is now a linked list rather than an array, right? So now the lower is not actually uh, any, uh, it's not a defined feature in the linked list class. And similarly, upper is not a defined feature in the linked list class. And also you can see that also, we don't actually have a force feature for the linked list. And also for the make empty, we also don't have a make empty feature for the linked list. So this is why we said this first version of the design for the three classes are actually very bad. Okay, because it does not follow the information hiding principle in such a way that if the supplier did not hide the design decision as a secret, then later on, if this secret, well, if this design decision is changed from one to another, then this will actually affect the client side severely. Okay, so I'm actually going to make a comment for you. So because I do want to show you the good version as well. Okay, a rate of order, and this will compile. Let me document this for you. 
<coughs> violation of the information hiding principle if the supplier changes the design decision of representing the orders for example uh, for example from array to link list then uh, all parts of the parts clients okay cards clients code okay for example we are talking about the shop will be severely affected i.e. not compilable okay the resolution is apply information hiding apply the information hiding principle by exporting this feature to none okay what you have to do is to actually export this to be none okay I'm actually going to create a separate class to actually uh, represent this new design okay so now okay so now to illustrate change array to link list and you will see compile errors all coming from the site of shop i.e. the clients okay I hope this is sufficient so please read through this text and make sure you understand it thoroughly okay this is basically the bad version okay I think it might be good for me to rename this so that you can actually to see exactly what I mean okay so maybe I would say this is actually a bad shop okay bad shop in the sense that it does not apply the uh, actually it's a poor shop actually it's a poor clients okay but anyway so bad shop okay and also for the cart because it does not apply the information hiding principle so I'm going to call that bad cart okay that's how we do the uh, um, refactoring for re, re, uh, for renaming the classes okay and I think for this tutorial I won't do any test cases that would be your responsibility and I do want because so far there's nothing in the uh, in universe that actually using these three classes so what I will do is just for now I would just say you have declare local variable the bad shop just to make them blue of course that shop okay so now they all become blue okay so now let's uh, the order I don't have to because order is simply just an encapsulation of the product unit price and quantity what I want to show you now is in the same cluster I'm going to create another two new classes called a good card and good shop in which case I will show you how we how we can do the information hiding principle in the uh, good card in such a way that in the good shop class it will have it will no longer have any access to the uh, uh, to the to the underlying represent representation of the uh, uh, representative representation of the uh, card okay now I also one one more thing I would like to mention is and because here you can see that you can see that here also you can see we somehow we want to put the add order so the add order in the uh, bad shop should also have no access to the array so that means we may have to remove we have to uh, refactor to move these commands maybe to the uh, to the cart class so that means cart should be the only place I mean the supplier should be the only place where uh, the supplier knows about the design decision of the representation of carts not uh, nowhere else 
Okay. Now let me uh, create two classes now. So if it's a new class, and then I would say good cart. Let's do that now. Good cart. A good design of shopping cart with uh, adopting the information hiding principle on representing orders. Okay, let me do that. And let me say compile. Okay, let me just create another class called the good shop. Okay, good shop. Okay, this is actually the client class of the cart. And now we're going to say, now we have uh, a client of cart which has no access to the secrets. And here we'd say IE. The representation of orders. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, we have the good shop, and we also have the uh, uh, good cart. Okay, let me go to good cart again, and also to give myself credits. That's also you have to do. Okay, so now the good cart is going to look very similar to the bad cart. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, copy and paste to save time and then to uh, do the uh, corresponding modification. Okay, let me do that. Good cart. Okay, so basically copy the code from the bad cart and now the key thing to do is to make sure this orders is exported to none. Okay, so now we're going to say adoption of the information hiding principle now in the good cart if the supplier changes the design decision of representing the orders from array to linked list, then all parts of the class client's code will not, okay, let me put it in capital, will not be affected, i.e. still compilable and passing all test cases. Okay, okay, so this is basically what we have to do. Okay, that's a comments for that. Okay, so compilable. So now we actually go into the good shop and see how it can use it. Okay, so you can see now because the uh, let me just copy that first and I'll show you what we have to change. Uh, what we have, what changes we have to make. So now let's go to the uh, uh, bad shop here. Let me just go to the bad shop and then let me just copy the code here. And I'll do the corresponding modification, of course. And now let's go to the uh, good shop here. And let me paste the code. And now it wouldn't work if we simply just do the code paste because you can see that this is actually still the code from the uh, bad design. And in the bad design, we were actually trying to uh, access cart.orders. But now because in the good, sh uh, good cart, Okay, we don't need a bad version anymore. So let me show you the good card. Remember, we actually export that to none to actually implement the uh, information hiding principle, right? So now the orders will be available to no clients, right? So now in a good shop, so now if we simply try to compile, of course, we have to change one more thing, sorry. So here, now this should be the good card that we're trying to use, okay? That's why it actually compiled before, okay? So now, always remember, if we need to copy and paste, make sure you fix things that have to be uh, fixed after the copy and paste. So now if we compile, aha, uh -huh. so we actually have so many errors. So they all, all of them have to do with the feature of qualified call is not available to the client class. That refers to exactly why the information hiding principle is valuable because in the good card, because we restrict the orders attributes, which has which uh, is which is re very relevant to how we the design decision from the supplier's point of view of how to represent the orders, we have restricted that to no one. I mean, no one can actually access this attributes, which means it's not part of the uh, public interface of the good card. So any 
clients of the good card cannot rely on any fact about how exactly we represent the orders. That's why you actually see the uh, in the good shop, which uses good card. Now, you cannot just simply reduce the code from the bad card because you can see in many cases, let's say for example in the total quantities of queries where we try to use in the bad design uh, to actually run a loop, iterate through the card that orders, right? So this would not be allowed anymore, okay? So this, you have to know why. So now we got so many compile time errors and they all belong to the same category, which is about, if I expand one of them, so for example, this one is here. So that is to say the orders from the good card class actually ex exported to none, and which means it, it is not exported to the class of good shop. Okay, that's exactly what information hiding can do for you. Okay, so now what we should do, okay, is to do the following. Okay, so now let's, uh, because now, so it seems like the add order which has to get somehow to get the information about how the orders is represented, right? So this add order and remove order features should not belong to the uh, shop feature. They should actually belong to the cart, uh, to, to the cart class, right? So that means all the information about how orders are exactly represented should only belong to the uh, the uh, cart class. Okay. First of all, let's. Uh, move this to to there okay so let me go to good card here and then I'm actually going to paste these two commands with some changes because now we should uh, remove the card the qualifier here because now we are referring to the orders in the secrets because now we are in the same class and this part is also secrets so a secret part might access another secret part that's it that is okay because now we are in the same supplier of the uh, cart okay so now i'm going to make another changes here so also we have to get rid of uh okay orders that force that's okay and now we're going to also copy that queries there so this will also be used in the uh, uh good cart right so now you can see that we have an auxiliary query here and now you can see that in the good card class, we have an auxiliary query for total quantities of. You can see now, now it is okay because now this part is also also a secret uh, for the uh, implementation body for the total qu uh, quantities of. But now they can access this part of secret. That's okay because we're not talking about the supplier. As long as the clients, which is a good shop, will not be affected by changing from array to linked list, then we will be happy, okay? So now, let's do the following. So now we remove this qualifier here because now we are switching the context to a different class. So now card dot, so just make sure we have no more that reference, okay? So also we should remove that as well, card dot. Okay, that's good, so now, Let's uh, try to compile and see what else we have to change. Okay, four more errors to change. Okay, so now, okay, so basically, now we are basically in this checkout feature. Okay, so now, the only change we have, the final change we have to make is to make sure that the checkout feature is actually, uh, uh, this, uh, the checkout feature in the good shop class, which is the clients, does not depend on the exact representation of the card that orders. Okay, so now what we can do, uh, let me show you one way of doing it. L later on in the lecture, we're actually going to show you some uh, design patterns for such scenario, which is called the iterator pattern. Okay, I'll show you that uh, in the lecture later, but we can actually show you one, another possibility of resolving the issue. So I would propose that we copy this code, not to cut it, just to copy it because somehow we still want to keep this feature here. But now let's go to the good card and paste that code there. And let's go to right after command. Okay, so now in the, uh, oh, okay. So now let's uh, have a feature section here, of course. Okay, so now checkout will be to return the price for the current card, okay. Okay, so here, 
we don't have we don't need that anymore okay remove that okay of course we have to make sure we remove the reference to card dot because now we're switching the context to the card class okay so let's see what else okay so now I think all the errors now so now as uh, now what we have just done was to copy and paste the code from good shop into good card and now good card part is actually okay they are only they're using the orders right so now it would be very simple just like a one line implementation for the checkout in the good shop pause for a moment how would you do that while I'm cleaning the mess here think about that how would you do the implementation then okay return the price do okay so now Okay, so basically we want to say the checkout in the uh, good shop class is actually clients of the cart only but and not its in uh, its uh, secret representations of orders because if you try to actually as I said before now if you try to say cart dot orders in the client side it will not compile because we have already restricted the access of the orders to be no clients okay so now in the good shop okay hopefully you have come up with a solution in just one line okay so checkout does not depend of course does not depend on the fact that the card order is is an array or a link list is irrelevant to the client side okay so now what we can do is we can simply return to say result is assigned to be cart dot checkout okay so that means okay uh, let me see what's oh okay so that's the good shop okay of course in the so here what we can do is um, okay so maybe we need another query here so here we can do another query here so let's do the following so let's introduce a query here called in the good uh, in the good card of course count integer return the number of orders in current card and what we would do is to say for example you can say result is assigned to be orders dot count and we can access the order because now we are in the same class as the good card, right? And this part is actually a secret part which can access another secret part in the same class, which is allowed. But any other clients, which means any other classes other than good card, cannot access these orders attributes. Okay, so now what we need to do is to say now we want to say card dot count. Okay, let me just repeat the issue again. So let me just redo. Uh, undo okay what we used to say was in the bad design cart dot orders because it was not hidden in the bad design that's why we can access the array orders directly and we can call it is empty feature there but as we said it actually depends on the design decision that might be subject to change so that's why we hide it we hit it and now we can say cart dot uh, count is equal to zero okay for the empty card okay so now everything compiles and now if you have a look at the bond diagram it will look very similar to the one before I wouldn't show you again you can do that yourself but now basically what we have done is to say now from the good card there is no longer an arrow like a client supplier relationship to the array class remember in the bad design we actually have two arrows going from good card uh, going from the back card okay the first arrow is because the order is actually the, the order is actually refer to the order class right so uh, sorry let me go to uh, I meant to go to the good shop uh, the bad shop okay let me show you again in the bad shop class in the bash in the bad design in the bad shop class we actually first of all we have a client supplier relationship be between a bad car uh, bad shop and a bad cart so there's an arrow 
let me uh, just show you again. Just uh, make sure you really understand. So bad design and good design. So this is with information hiding. This is without information hiding, of course. So now in the bad design, so from the cards, uh, let me say bad card just to disambiguate. So bad card actually. So this is not the right arrow, but I'm just trying to use ASCII key to uh, ASCII character to show you. So you're supposed to draw that properly in the visio. So bad card actually has. Remember, we actually have orders, and here uh, that uh, is a client. Uh, that uh, bad card is a client. Uh, bad shop. Sorry, my mistake. Should be uh, to bad card. At the same time, bad shop also has some card uh, orders, right? Okay, that also has uh, some uh, client supply into array. Okay, so however, we said this part is actually not good because at any point of time, if the supplier of the bad card actually changes the, the design decision from array into, let's say, a linked list, that means this is going to affect the dependency of the bad shop, right? So the bad shop actually has to change the way it uses the card that orders from array into linked list, which means all the old, all the existing code in the bad shop will suddenly not compile. So in a good design, with the information hiding uh, in post, what we have achieved is basically to remove the second dependency here. So in the uh, in the second architecture, we don't have this uh, client supply relationship anymore. Okay, so but we still have this. However, because now orders dot so orders here is actually uh sorry I beg your pardon this should be card not orders okay so don't get confused okay you have you might have found that already so in the best shop we actually have a card attributes and also card dot orders is exported to any so that means the clients can access the internal secrets of the supplier. But now, in the good design with the information hiding principle, now in the bad card class, we'd say orders is now exported to none. So now, in the bad shop, which is a uh, so in the good shop, in the good shop class, now it has only access to the card attributes, but it has no access to its orders attributes because the orders is now exported to none. Okay, so we are essentially we have removed the uh, dependency of between this class and this class, so that if this class here changes from array into linked list, this class would not be affected anymore because there's no such dependency in the good design. I hope that's clear. Okay, so now let me show you one more thing, and then the rest will be up to you. I will mention the exercise to you at the end of the tutorial. Okay, let. We go to the uh, good shop again. Okay, let me just click on here. So good shop and good cart. Let me mention to you one more thing. So now, what happens if we change from array into linked list? Remember, now we are in the context of the good cart, right? And now, uh, in the good cart, and now because the uh, orders is exported to none, which means we are hoping that the good shop would not be affected by the fact that we are changing from array into linked list. Okay, so now would we get any any compile time errors? Okay, we would. However, those compile time errors only come from the supplier side because if you are changing your representation from orders uh, from link uh, from array into linked list, of course you have to change your the way you actually access the internal orders in your supplier's code. That is okay. But now the key is we won't get any compile time errors anymore in the client side. Let's double check with that. Okay. Now if we do that, okay, maybe there was a typo there. Okay. Let me compile again. Okay. We do have the uh, compile time error there. Okay. Let me just illustrate this to you again. If you see all the compile time errors, they all come from the good card. Remember, the good card is actually, so here you can see that the good card is actually the supplier side. 
it is okay because if the supply changes its internal secrets, it has to do its modification accordingly, right? So this is okay. Let me just to say changing this representation from for example array to link list will only affect the supplier's site i.e. good card the client's site will not be aware of it i.e. a good shop still compiles okay please read through this message and make sure what it, you know what I really mean okay so now you can see that because now all the compile time errors actually only come from the supplier side so once compiler once the supplier fix all the errors to adapt the uh, implementation code or the secrets into this new representation or the design change then everything will just compile so you can see that in this good design the design change due to information hiding would not affect the uh, client side okay let me show you one more thing okay uh, which I didn't show you before for the bad design okay so now let me just change that back to array so now I'm now switching to the context of the bad design okay so now let's say bad shop and also bad cart bad cart okay if I do this so now this is a bad card where the orders is not exported to none. It's actually exported to anyone. Okay, let me show you one more thing. If you change this from link array to link list. Okay, so now remember in the good design, the, uh, the design decision only causes compile time errors from so support, the supplier side only. But now I want to show you that, well, I want to show you again that for the bad design, if the design change occurs from the supplier side, the compile time errors occurs also from the client side. Okay, so now I know for the bad design, I change from array into linked list and I say compile. You can see that now most of the compile time error actually comes from the bad shop, and in the good design, all the errors come from the good uh, cart, right? Please make sure you understand what these compile time errors really mean. And you should really contrast the two designs very, very thoroughly and carefully. Okay, that's really the key for this tutorial. That's why I have spent time going very thoroughly on the two designs and make sure you follow them and take the notes. Okay, in the bad design, most of the errors actually go to the client side, which is a bad shop, because they actually have access to the array, uh, used to uh, to the old array representation. So that's why you change this. It's going to uh, going to affect the uh, clients severely. Okay, so let me change that. Okay, I leave all the comments for you. Okay, so now that would be what I want to say for this tutorial. So let me just uh, recap of what I have just done, and now mention the exercise for you to complete. So in this exercise here, I try to show you two designs of the same simplified online shop for checkout. So the bad design, which I show first, did not apply the information hiding principle, which means in the supplier side, the data representation of the orders, uh, which is array to begin with, is also exposed to the clients, which is the shop class. So that's why the shop class can actually get access to this orders array, and then to develop the client's code according to the array representation. So that's why if later on, if the supplier changes the data representation of the array into let's say link list, then most of the compile time error that will result from this change would actually go from the uh, go to the client side, which is not good. Because whenever the supplier makes any changes, it should cause the minimum uh, disturbance to the clients, or maybe should be should cause no disturbance to the clients. Okay? So the bad design tells us that. The representation of the orders in the card class should have been hidden as a secret for the supplier. So that's why we use the iPhone notation of feature exported to none. 
uh, in the good design, the second version of the design. That will actually cause the uh, clients of the card, which is good shop that we have developed, the good shop has no access to the card dot orders anymore. So that's why it cannot depend on that re data representation. Okay, although with some restriction there, but the restriction is imposed with a good reason. So as we can see in the good design, if the good card, the supplier changes the, the design decision from array into linked list representation for the orders, because the orders was exported to none. And that means the only compile time errors we will get, which is reasonable, will only go to the supplier side, which means the supplier has to modify other parts of the secrets accordingly, according to the new representation. But on the other hand, the good shop, the clients, is, was not affected at all. Okay, that's a recap, and you have to really go through the two designs thoroughly yourself and make sure you really understand what's the advantages and disadvantages for the good and bad design. Okay, let me just mention the exercise you have to do, and let me just go back to the iPhone Studio, and let me just go there. Maybe somehow I close that. Let me just uh, open it again. Okay, so let me just go back to the shop projects, and what you have to do, uh, several things. So first of all, go to the uh, bad card. Uh, actually, maybe just don't worry about the bad uh, version anymore. So maybe just go to the good version because the bad version is just to illustrate to you the architecture of the dependency. One more thing to mention, uh, you also have to know very well. Of course, you have to know how to generate diagram, architectural diagram for you to adapt to the Visio tool. And then also you have to, okay, how to know how to use the force feature of array and also, you have to know the, uh, the, this is the essence of the crucial difference between the good design and the bad design. And we, we essentially have removed the dependency, this dependency here, to the array from the clients, uh, from, uh, from the bad design. So in the good design, we don't have such dependency anymore. That's really the essence you have to understand. Okay, so now the exercise for you to do is to basically uh, don't worry about the bad car and uh, bad shop. Of course, you have to be you have to be able to reproduce the compile time errors I show you on the video. But you have to complete the uh, good card here, the good card here, and complete all the missing contracts contracts first and the implementation for all the uh, commands. Add order, remove order, and also we have the count, we have the checkout. And we have the total quantities of. You might need more auxiliary queries for the contract, uh, for the uh, your other contracts. Okay. So first, finish all the contracts for the rest of the features in the good card and also the good shop. Okay. Finish all the contracts here, and then finish all the implementations, and then create a test cases here. Maybe call the test uh, shop. Okay. And over there, you only have to test the good shop and good card. Uh, you don't have to worry about the bad design. That one is only for you to, uh, to illustrate to you the architecture of a bad design. So finish all the contracts and implementation for a good card and good shop, and then create a new class in the tests cluster called maybe test uh, shop, and then create as many test cases as, as possible, and make sure you follow the TDD, test-driven development practice, and make sure all the test cases pass to make sure you have reasonable confidence about the correctness of your implementation of your software. Okay, that's uh, basically what I want to achieve for this tutorial. So please complete the exercise. This one is extremely important exercise for you to do to be able to appreciate the information hiding principle. Okay, stay watching.